Okay, so this is a beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, sunny July day at work. Um, this is about living with a 2014 WC R1200 RT. I bought this in September, uh, brand new. There's quite a lot of things that I wish I'd known when I bought it. Um, in general, I think this is an incredible piece of engineering. Um, it's not the best put together. Uh, I'll come on to that in a bit. Um, I've got quite a few warranty issues with it, so I'm going to be quite straight up and down about this. I had an 1150RT on a 2001 plate. I did 70,000 miles on it. I use the bike every single day to go to work, so it's done a winter. Um, as you will see in a minute, I will sure go and start it up. I've just given it a quick clean because it's going down for its service today, so the bits I'm going to show you are about to get replaced. So here we go. There you go, as you can see, it's currently 9,210 miles. It's now June, so it's September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So I'm doing about 1,200 a month uh, on it at the moment. Um, things that really going for it, uh, I think this is the best colour combination. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, it's the Callista Grey. As you can see, it looks kind of cool. Matte. Um, it's a bitch to keep clean. Um, and I clean it probably once or twice a week um, because of the winter riding. Um, it's actually faring, I think, pretty well um, in general, although there are a few issues. Um, so let's start with the warranties that have taken place. So tomorrow, um, as you can see here and around here, hopefully you can see the rust bubbling through on the rear swing arm. Um, absolutely unacceptable as is this which is salt burn now bearing in mind that this bike's done 9,000 miles over the winter and I think from the rest of it you should get a pretty good idea of how clean I keep my bike there you go it's pretty well immaculate apart from that um, you can see I don't muck about when it comes to cleaning I'm sadly one of my slightly OCD traits um, right down to obviously you see the exhaust clean it uh, with the proprietary cleaners and white spirit to get all the tar off it so I really look after my bikes um, I can't actually afford to uh, to replace them very regularly um, I'll currently work for a charity which is fantastic and without this bike I wouldn't be able to facilitate that job uh, to get me in and out of work every day so there you go it's a beautiful looking bike so I've got warranty issue with the rear swing arm with the build quality on that um, then we get on to this now I know this is a known fault um, I don't mind the layout on this, um, however tomorrow it's being changed for the third time in seven months. That worries me massively. Uh, the first one, the screen switch kept sticking up. This one, um, this is all wobbly, this is all crunchy. Um, it's shit, there's no other word for it actually. It's, the build quality on this is appalling. This is not up to BMW standards. Um, I guess this is a, uh, it's a real shame. What worries me is I'm, I'm contracted to this bike for three years with a finance deal I say this is my third one in seven months I think I've got a two-year parts and labor warranty so it will keep going in and going in but the third year we've yet to uh, discover what we're going to do about that I think so that's an issue for me uh, the rear swing arm this fantastic little cubby hole here let's see if I can come around the front so here we go this little cubby hole um, sometimes opens I keep my receipts in there as you can see Sometimes doesn't. It's a bit plasticky. It's not really up to the job. Also leak like a sieve. Uh, I think because this rubber seal around here sometimes gets folded over. Um, it's just a little bit disappointing really. Um, when you're spending this kind of money on a bike, I think the whole thing with the panniers and everything else and the top box was about 15,000. So we're not talking about a cheap thing here at all. Um, talking of the top box. I think I had it colour coded, I think it's ridiculous that BMW don't colour code the top boxes and give you a silver one with a grey bike, because actually it looks flipping ace colour coded. I'd like to thank the guys in Reading who painted this, they did an absolutely stellar job, I think the finish is better than BMW, so quality work there. Um, this was bought through Barnstormer, they were brilliant, have been brilliant to date, like I say the warranty work is going on tomorrow, so hopefully um, those two things will get rectified. I mean other, other quality issues is stuff like... I don't know if you can see these nuts. 
they're just rusted to hell. They've already been cleaned once by Barnstormer, they use a propriety cleaner on them. Tried to clean them up, that one there, it's just substandard crap. Um, this one down here on the bottom of the exhaust, if I can find it, where is it, there you go. There's a lot of corrosion around the plate there, and this is despite keeping this thing as clean as a whistle. Um, as you can see, some of the other screws are fine. They're not too bad, most of them, they're all, um, where are we? There we go, sorry. A little bit of rust coming through on that one, but they're, they're all stainless bolts, so there shouldn't be any rust at all, in my opinion. Um, what else have I disappointed about this? Um, I think that's it. A few warranty issues, like I say. I mean, they've been really good so far, BMW and, and Barnstorm in particular. Oops, excuse me. Um, the bike itself, like I say, I ride it quite hard. Um, it never has the panniers on. I go in and out of traffic. It, it, uh, the mirrors are a fantastic, um, yeah, they're a fantastic sort of width guide. Um, I can whiz through the traffic on it. It's super comfortable. The screen's pretty good. Gives a little bit of buffeting here and there, but not too bad. Um, tire wear has been pretty good on this, although I had to get punctured after a thousand miles, which is a bit annoying. Um, one thing that really pissed me off when I bought it was, as you will see, No daytime running lights. The circular lights don't come as standard. So all of the pictures you see of your BMW RT12 R1200 RT, if you see it with the angel eyes on the front, that makes it look so goddamn cool. Uh, yeah, you need to pay for that. They didn't bother telling me that. Um, so I have these two little lights on the outside. Now the little lights on the outside are now LED. They were stupid little things that basically couldn't light a fart, um, and that really frustrated me. I mean, you're talking about a. I think about 160 quid to fa have the light unit fitted at factory um, to get it replaced now, 750 quid. Um, it's really annoying because it makes the front of the bike look wrong. It's not how it should be. Um, I've, I've yet to have this completely out with BMW. Um, I think I should have been told. It's a very complicated story behind it. Um, so that all sounds like a bunch of whinging crap, which it is because uh, these things are very frustrating. However, it's incredibly comfortable. Um, I think it's incredibly stylish. I think it looks great with the panniers. Um, it's economical, does about 51 a gallon, even though I ride it quite hard most of the time. Um, things I didn't have, I think it's pretty much got everything. The central locking I had put on it, um, as a bit of a laugh actually, but it's been invaluable. It's, it's a brilliant addition. Um, I spent a lot of money on the top box, which that annoyed me uh, greatly because my old top box obviously didn't fit. However, if you've got a previous model, um, they do fit. They're quite nice. So you can see I carry stuff for work in it. Um, so it's not as tight as it could be. But it has an internal LED light. It has gas struts, so it's easy to open with one hand, easy to shut with one hand, as you can see. Um, and actually the gas, the, the LED light is a, uh, it's brilliant in the winter where I park my bike up. Um, it's very, very dark. So when I'm getting my stuff off the bike at night, it's just uh, it's just brilliant. So yeah, it was a lot of money. Um, don't get me wrong. Is it worth the money? Yeah, for me, because I don't run the panniers. Um, the panniers haven't been on a bike since day dot and I club a, a whole rucksack full of stuff for getting changed for work. So yep, um, I'm glad I spent the money. I would have liked, I think as they do a high level LED because this piece of plastic's pretty flimsy and pretty shoddy. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, overall, after 9,000 miles, um, I've enjoyed it, even during the winter. It's not quite as planted. Um, it came with Continental Attack 2, I think, GT tires or something on it, which are, I think, frankly, there's not a word for it, they are hideous in the wet. Um, they are so confidence uninspiring. And yet, as soon as the sun comes out, I get this thing banked over, uh, no problem at all, almost right to the edge. Um, of the tyres, uh, so they really are chalk and cheese. I'm going to probably go back to Pilots, I think, um, and give them a go on the next one, although these are holding up pretty well. They flatted off, I do a bit of motorway mileage, as you can see, tyres are flatted off a little bit, um, so these are pretty much on their lasties. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Um, other things I love about it, it sounds bloody great, I love it. Um, it's got a real rasp to it when you're giving it some. Um, I like the stainless steel exhaust. I'm glad I didn't go for the chrome. I think it suits the look of this particular model with this colour scheme much better than the than the chrome pipes. I think they're a bit garish. Um, I'd like to keep the fronts clean. I do, I've only just washed it. Um, I do tend to be a bit silly and polish the bog standard pipes with uh, Autosol. When I get a chance to do it properly, this has just had a splash. Um, I'll hold the camera still. This has just had a splash, really. Um, Brakes have been a bit of an issue. The rear, 
the rear brake has some really strange ABS issues that they can't quite pin down in that the brake pedal itself I tend to um, just sort of run very so slightly with the brake sort of on as I go through traffic just just resting my foot if you apply the front brake um, quite often it would just shift underneath your thing underneath your foot um, it's a bit unnerving especially in the winter it's not a, it's not a good feeling at all um, I think there's an issue somewhere with the system but we can't kind of work out what it is between myself and the dealer um, it's going to take a lot of time trying to sort it out and as I say it's it's a daily commute this one so um, I can't fall for it to be off the road at any time so all in all I think um, as a piece of machinery as a as a, a nice aesthetic thing to be part of um, I give this bike a good 8 out of 10 I think economy and power it's good it's about you know again 8 9 out of 10 for that ride comfort superb uh, it's got the dynamic suspension on it so um, I can do a video on that I mean this is the SE model um, I didn't need hill starts if you can't start a bloody bike on a hill frankly you shouldn't be riding a bike um, without using your own right foot on the brake pedal it's what you're taught to ride a bike I've been riding for 30 something years um, so I don't need that the demonstrator they gave me when this was last in had the uh, clutchless shifting gearbox which was a bit odd um, and completely unnecessary so I didn't go for the LE model um, the only thing this one doesn't have which I wish I bought at source um, the sat nav unit which I didn't realize did so much more than the sat nav there's a really good review on YouTube by the Missenden flyer about the sat nav v5 um, he's a very uh, um, erudite and eloquent man and he explains what it does brilliantly and he's quite right I wish I bought it um, uh, I wish I bought tire sensors for the pressures because I do lose a bit of air on these tires um, using it all the time um, the valves are a bit iffy they do sit beautifully at 90 degrees to the wheel so they should be really easy to access but actually um, bizarrely most of the um, tire pressure things in the garages don't fit on them very well so they tend to let out more water uh, more air than they put in to start with that can be quite frustrating on a cold winter's day when you need to get some air pressure in there um, yeah and I think apart from that it's it's a it's a fine thing um, it would be interesting to see how it holds up over the next I don't know I've got two years left on my on my finance with this I, I think I can do 54,000 miles which will be less than my other bike um, I think it's holding up okay it wasn't a particularly harsh winter I don't feel for salt and stuff like that so it should be holding up well I look so I do look after it a lot I drive my wife mad cleaning it all the time um, but then it's a, an expensive thing and I don't want to lose too much money um, at the moment BMW have been very 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 good about the warranty work they've changed stuff without question um, although I'm about to take my BMW gloves back in as well because they are now going to be on pair number three because they've got build quality so there's something just not quite essentially right with the build quality on BMs at the moment it, it, there's stuff slipping through the nets there's certain parts of it that are great certain parts that let it down massively and that's a real shame because if this was a solid together motorcycle on its build quality like the older ones then uh, then it would be absolutely uh, incredible piece of machinery um, as it is it's you know its initial life has been a little bit tainted with me so we, we've got a bit of a love-hate relationship t to now but I have to say this summer the power you can use um, I do wish I had got, uh, gone for the uh, for the dynamic mode I, I went for the just the bog standard rain and uh, rain and road mode I mean it still has all the um, it still has the uh, you know all of the gubbins on here for the different levels of suspension that you can go to um, including the jewels and pillions and what have you um, it does have a lot of stuff that you don't hear about actually so let's big it up right at the end so it's not all completely negative um, I love the fact that the screen disappears down flat and always remembers where it's going to be when you start the bike up it gives you about 15 yards of riding and then it re it goes back to where it was where you left it the night before um, didn't see that anywhere in a brochure the clocks are adjustable um, I think that's well known um, there's this little panel here that you don't see so much that has a lot of information that again you don't hear about I mean I'm, this this screen is uh, it's not the reason I bought the bike at all I did ride a 2012 with the standard LED screen but this is incredible you can see this screen in just about any light whatsoever um, I'm sorry I'm so shaky but you can see it in just about any light whatsoever it really is a very uh, beautiful thing uh, really easy to read but it, there's a lot that goes on in this little box here um, with regards to the settings you can put there so you can have stopwatch you can have 
uh, travel times, date, the oil level, also oil level, your voltage as you're running, um, your temperature, your average speed, your range to empty, your consumption onto your average and your, you know, your current consumption. Um, again, there's a lot of stuff that's sort of tucked away that you don't don't actually get to know about which they should push a lot more you know there's no two ways about it there are some really nice little touches within that whole um, binnacle that you don't really hear about um, I might do a video on the whole thing I'm sure most people know what goes on in there but um, yeah so that that should be done and like I say my, my overall impressions of, of the first sort of nine months with it I think it looks cool it, it drives superbly when it wants to there you go looks great um, they could just sort some of the quality issues out you know it would be a lot better you know I've got a uh, 1997 Suzuki with uh, is it Tokiko discs something like that not spot of rust you know it's just stuff like this is just a pisser really it just shouldn't it shouldn't be there there should be uh, ways of dealing with that I mean my biggest concern was keeping the bulkhead clean actually that for the front here but actually it's it's been fine um, I get in there with an electric toothbrush to clean out the BMW every now and again. Um, so there you go, that's my 2014 Wickley Wick Cool BMW in all its glory, warts and all. So enjoy. <laughs>